These little packages are mixers, so RF mixers. And these are used. I removed them from some stuff that I had. I don't remember what it was, but some junk equipment. And I pulled these out knowing what they were and knowing that I could make use of them someday. And I think these three are all of the same. Yeah, these three are all of the same. Actually, I had a fourth one as well, and I'll show you that later. Then I have this little one here too, uh, but I thought these, these big ones uh, would take a look at. So, so what is an RF mixer? Well, I, I sort of know what they do, but I've never really played with them before. So we can both learn together. Um, I'll probably make a bunch of mistakes and people will correct me. But uh, let's take a look at the data sheet for these things. Uh, they're, they're built by a company called uh, uh, Mini Circuits. Mini Circuits has a lot of uh, uh, microwave and RF type, type stuff. And um, so it says plug-in. So I guess there's a socket for these or something. Anyway, you can plug them in. <laughs> these were soldered into the board, so I don't know what they mean by plug-in. So there's a, there's a pin out here, and there's uh, a schematic diagram. So this is probably the most useful thing. Let's see if I can, am I zoomed in all? Yeah, I am zoomed in all the way. So this is the most useful thing. So this is called, I think I'm gonna get this right, a double balance diode modulator. I think I'm getting that right, anyway. So the reason that it's double balanced is uh, in, in, if you're a ham radio guy, you, you've heard the word ballon. Ballon means balanced to unbalanced transformation. So it's a transformer that takes an unbalanced uh, transmission and turns it into a balanced transmission. So if you have, uh, anyway. So uh, on this side, it's unbalanced. So we have a single input to ground, reference to ground, and so, it's not like a, uh, a push-pull. So um, on this side though, it gets transformed into a balanced. So you have a center tap that's grounded and then you have plus and minus signals on the output. So unbalanced on this side, balanced on this side. So it balances it. And then over here, we have the same thing. We have a um, output this time, but it goes from balanced to unbalanced this time. And uh, then we have this, uh, I think it's called a ring modulator or a diode modulator. I'm probably going to get it wrong, but that's got little shotgun di diodes in here to do the modulation. And then instead of being ground, this uh, transformer instead of being ground referenced, it's referenced with a, another signal. So you have one signal that comes into here, into what's called the RF port. You have another signal that comes into LO, which is the local oscillator. And those two mix together with this, and then they output into an IF frequency, an intermediary frequency. So it comes out an immediate frequency. So that's what's inside those little cans. All right, I couldn't find it. Uh, so I took, I took one of these mixers and put it inside one of my little cases here. And uh, so here are the inputs. The uh, RF and the LO get mixed together and they go out to the IF. And that's the part number of the uh, mini circuits. And the data sheet says it's good from 10 to a gigahertz. Um, plus seven dBm is the optimum power level for the LO. So that's always important in these things. I'm not quite sure why, but I know it's important. So this is very similar to something that might look like this. So this is a mini circuits. Uh, if you want to buy one all put together from mini circuits, well, they do that for you. So you can just get one of these. Uh, but I thought it'd be fun to have one that matches my other uh, set of, uh, of RF goodies. Uh, so these are probably pretty equivalent. Um, I don't know about the actual model number, but I mean, uh, the way that they're constructed. All right. So, uh, mixer. So let's go try a mixer out. Um, we will try to make uh, a intermediate frequency. So I have a 70 megahertz generator. So we'll bring 70 megahertz into the RF and then we will mix that with a local oscillator. So let's say we have 70 here and we bring in 10 here, then we should get 80 
and 60. We should get the, the plus and we should get the minus. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's see, LO, maybe we should do the LO as the, as the 70 megahertz. Anyway, we'll go try it out. This is what I'm measuring right now. I have my 70, 70 megahertz oscillator going into a cleanup filter. So I'm getting a nice spectrally clean 70 megahertz. All right, so we're measuring that now. So that 70 megahertz is measuring at about minus 30 dBm, minus 29 dBm. So we're gonna take that um, signal and we're gonna call it the RF in our mixer. Okay, so that's our, that's the frequency that we're gonna start out with. So, so here's my mixer and we're gonna put that into RF, all right. Let me tighten that. And then we will connect our spectrum analyzer to the IF. And uh, let's see. All right. All right. So now we have the uh, 70 megahertz going into the uh, mixer. It's a, a carrier suppressed mixer, so it's uh, canceling out the, um, it's taking the balance to unbalance and so it's kind of canceling it out. So we've gone down to minus, minus 60 dBm, so our 70 megahertz is very small on the output, so it's suppressed it. So now we're going to mix it with a signal. And so let's go ahead and mix it with... All right, we're gonna mix it with 30 megahertz, right? So we're gonna start at 70 and we're gonna mix it with 30. So the, on the positive side, we should get 100. And on the negative side, we should get 40. And so let's go ahead and turn on the LO. So now the LO, I'm using the machine itself. It's on the duplex output. So I'm gonna turn that on. And you see that we get a whole bunch of things now. We get two big things. And so let's measure those. So this peak is at 99.95. So this is our 100 megahertz peak. And this one is at 40 megahertz. So that's our minus peak. So our plus peak and our minus peak. Um, but then we have some additional peaks as well. So there's a bunch of strange harmonics that happen in mixers that uh, I've seen the math before. I can't say that it's not impossible to understand, but there's a whole bunch of byproducts. So not only does you get the plus and the minuses, but you get two plus, you get twice the frequency minus one of the frequencies and one of the frequencies minus twice the frequencies and you and you get thirds and you anyway you get a whole bunch of them in there and you get all those little ones and this is what makes it difficult to build things like spectrum analyzers so uh, you start with a frequency and you do a first conversion well that first conversion let's say in the case of my uh, um, 8558 it starts at a, at a range of 0 to 1.5 gigahertz, but it then up converts everything to 2 gigahertz. So you can imagine that we have a center frequency here that we're trying to measure, and then we up convert it, and this is our uh, 2 gigahertz uh, IF frequency. But we're getting all of these other ones here too. And so it's very important that you have filters to start throwing away all those weird things. And so that's why you have IF filters. The, there's a filter at, at two gigahertz that would just take this one signal and throw away all those other signals. And then you would say, okay, well then maybe that's not good enough. So then you convert it a, a third, second or third time, and then you have filters for those as well. So each time you're cleaning up all of these really weird uh, filters. So it's one of the problems building uh, spectrum analyzers is learning what frequencies to up or down convert to, what, what, 
what aren't multiples of things and make sure that things don't crash into one another. So, um, so we can see that here. But anyway, uh, we can go to the RF generator and we can change its frequency. There's, uh, let's see, let's change it down. So here's the uh, 70 megahertz is still in the center and I'm mixing it with 10 megahertz. So now it's plus or minus 10 megahertz, plus or minus 20 megahertz, and plus or minus 30 megahertz. So plus or minus 40 megahertz, when are we gonna run out? Plus or minus 50 megahertz. Yeah, and then we'll, I think we'll run off the screen pretty soon. Oh, we're just right on the edges of the screen now, which is 70 megahertz mixed with 70 megahertz. So. Anyway, that's how um, that's how mixers work, and uh, the amount of spurs and stuff has to do with the drive level of things, uh, whether you see them or not. I can change the amplitude of my mixer, um, and you can see that we're generating more spurs by having a higher and a higher LO. Let me lower the, uh, the alone. Uh, so now it's not starting, it's not working well. Now our center and our side lobes are about the same. And that's because I'm only driving the LO at minus nine dBm. Now the data sheet says for maximum, you should drive it at plus seven dBm. Um, and, and that's so that you get better suppression. Um, so let me go back up to zero dBm, which is what, what I was driving at. And you can see that the carrier is about uh, one to about 20 dB down. Let me go up to plus seven. And there we go. See, now the carrier is uh, one to, so about 20, about almost 30 dB down. So uh, it is better, but now we're creating more side things. So depending on what you need to do, whether you need to suppress the center or you need to suppress the outside uh, harmonics and stuff, I guess depends on how you're driving it. All right, now I probably said a whole bunch of things wrong. Um, uh, really, this is the first time I've ever really looked at a mixer before. So they are interesting devices. Um, they do operate the way you think they do. You can either up convert or down convert. And um, yeah, interesting.